Colorado head coach Deion Sanders does not mind if his players fight. We all know what happened last year. But is that leading to some issues for the 2024 season? I think it is. You are Locked On Buffs, your daily podcast on the Colorado Buffaloes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked on Buffs. I am your host, Kevin Borber. Today's episode of Locked on Buffs is brought to you by the Locked on Podcast Network. It's your team every day for free and available wherever you get your podcast. So thank you guys for tuning in and making me your first listen of the day. Today we're talking about practice fights, spring ball fights. Are they cool? Are they encouraging? Sure. Coach Prime seems to like them, but I think there's an issue with too many fights. And obviously there's not a fight tracker or fight counter, but I think last season showed us all we needed to see about kind of the message that the players were receiving during spring ball and fall camp. Uh, but the other day, if you guys weren't aware, there was a little skirmish, if you will, um, at the call at, during the first week of spring ball. And Coach Prime said, these kids are just nasty, man. They don't play. They don't play. I don't like them to fight, but I like the intensity. Even on a day when we're not in pads, I told them, when the helmets is off, you got to stop. When it happens, I see that we got that dog in us. He said, these guys are different. These are some different coaches as well. It's a tremendous difference. I feel so darn good right now about the staff, about the team, about the city, about everything we're doing right now. And then, obviously, he talked about the difference between this year and last year because going into spring ball last year or fall camp last year, majority of the guys that were at spring ball were not on the team in fall camp. So he said, we're already ahead. This time last year, we darn, we darn near just met this year. You are just trying to make sure the pieces fit. You know what you have. You know the depth that you have. And you know several other pieces are going to be added as soon as spring is over. You know that this is going to happen this summer. So it's going to be phenomenal. See, I like, and when it comes down to the fights, I honestly like the grittiness. I like the the message that it sends in terms of like, we're going to be tough. We're not going to let anyone push us over. No one's going to no one's gonna be stronger than us. No one's going to be fit, more physical than us. And I don't think Colorado had a softness issue last year. I don't think that was really an issue they had an issue in the trenches they just were not good enough like there is no they weren't strong enough they weren't big they just weren't good enough i mean maybe you could say they weren't big enough but they were just not good enough and i think coach prime made a lot of headlines last year when he was encouraging his players to fight i think he i forgot who he yelled at it was like this whole thing i think it was a whole unit he was yelling at them if someone's fighting draw fighting and that was kind of like the mentality is like if some if your teammate your brother is out there just fighting and you guys aren't helping him out that's on you. You guys are bad teammates. So I get that from that perspective. And I totally agree with that in the sense that you should always have your teammates back. But in the sense that we're kind of praising fighting during spring ball, I worry that this could be an issue during the season. And I say this not because I expect Colorado to go out there and fight everybody. They weren't fighting anybody last year. Um, I do think that they had a little bit of a cockiness to them, uh, which we saw in the pregame Oregon video. And obviously that kind of came back to bite them. I think a lot of things uh, um, were kind of blown out of proportion. I think that that start to the season really kind of put them, maybe, maybe gave them some irrational confidence, which is okay. It's okay to be irrational confidence, irrationally confident sometimes. But when it leads to problems and discipline issues, I think that's where it goes wrong. And I'm not saying Colorado off the field discipline issues. I think a couple guys did, but those guys are no longer with the team. But they had on the field discipline issues in terms of penalized penalties. Excuse me. They were the second most penalized team in the country. They had a total of um, 107 penalty yards or 107 penalties, excuse me, for 854 yards, uh, which is an average of 71.17 per game. Uh, they the only team that was penalized more than them was New Mexico, who had 119 penalties and had 1,076 penalty yards and 89.67 per game. Obviously, you never want to be penalized that much, especially when penalties take you out of games. And there was multiple games this past year where penalties hurt them. The one that stands out the most is the Stanford game. Um, although Travis Hunter is a great player and he seems like a great guy, his penalty where he pushed the receiver after the play, on I think it was fourth down. It was like fourth and long or third and long or something. And all of a sudden, Stanford got a first down, and then they got to charge down the field and score another touchdown. That didn't help. Uh, there was a lot of like roughing the passer penalties or running into the quarterback or running into the, the roughing the kicker, whatever it may be. Colorado had a lot of discipline issues on the field last season. And I don't know if 
there's a correlation between during spring ball, they're allowed to do whatever they want and fall camp. They're allowed to like fight and do whatever they want. But I have to think that there's some correlation there. Like if you're kind of told it's okay to do this after the play, it's okay to do this if this happens to you. And then they start doing it in the game and it's hurting them. Maybe we should readjust how we kind of approach this. Cause you know, you know what they say about kind of penalties and fights. It's always the second guy who gets caught. So it doesn't matter if, like I think Travis Hunter was kind of being taunted by the Stanford receiver, but Travis Hunter was the one that retaliated. So it's always the guy that retaliates. And I think Colorado had too much of a retaliation mindset last season where I think they either need to kind of t- turn the other cheek or be the aggressor in situations where it's like if they're going to be the ones that want to be a frisky team, they have to be the ones that are kind of getting in guys' faces, not the ones that are having people in their faces or not the ones that are messing up and drawing these penalties obviously you don't want any penalties but i think a lot of their issues last season were due to a lack of discipline now obviously they had like illegal substitution issues they had holding issues on offense there was issues all over the place but i think part of this a large chunk of this obviously the holding issues were because the offense linemen weren't good and couldn't hold any blocks but i think a lot of this comes back to the message that they're preaching the message that they're receiving during spring and fall camps and i feel like there needs to be an emphasis on playing smart playing tough you could still play tough and play smart i think utah is a good example where utah is one of the most physical teams in the country and let's see where they ranked in penalties sorry this is just a on spur of the moment um kind of thought they ranked 21st in the country in penalties so they had 65 total penalties for four um for an average of 41 yards per game So they were not penalized as much and they still managed to be physical. They were tough. They were gritty. So I think Colorado needs to find that fine line of like, we're going to be a team that no one messes around with, but we're also going to be a team that doesn't shoot ourselves in the foot and take ourselves out of games because we wanted to be a little loud one player. We wanted to get a little, little chesty. We wanted to puff out the chest like a peacock or something like I get it. It's a part of the game. I get it. It's kind of a team building thing where your coach is like, yeah, you guys stick together. And I get that. I totally get that. I appreciate that. But there comes a point in time where you kind of have to look at it and be like, okay, maybe we need to back off the the altercations a bit. And that's just my take. You guys comment below. Are fights good or bad considering Colorado was the most penalized team in the Power 5 last season? Let me know what you think. Obviously, I feel like this will be a highly disagreed upon take. But I don't think what I'm – and I want you guys to hear this before I move on. I'm not saying never have your teammates back. I'm not saying that it's not a part of football. But I am saying – that they had an issue with discipline last year on the field. Does this kind of factor into that or no? I guess we'll we'll find out this next season. If they're penalized again, then we're kind of going to look back at this moment and be like, yeah, Kevin was right. And if I'm wrong, I'll be like, you know what? I was wrong about the fights. I will gladly admit that. Um, but it's just how, just how it goes. Uh, also, you guys know sometimes it gets chippy on the football field, but sometimes it doesn't need to get chippy on the football field is all I'm saying. When we come back, we're going to be talking about all the quarterback recruiting that Colorado is doing right now, who they're in the mix for, who they're pursuing, and all that jazz. But first, a word from our sponsors. This episode of Locked on Bus is brought to you by Better Together. Better Together. Bracket already busted, tired of the same old daily fantasy grind where you make a roster, cross your fingers, and hope for the best, or losing on the last leg of your pickup entry, introducing Better Together, the first cooperative daily fantasy po- sport, daily fantasy sp- platform, excuse me, where teamwork trumpets, trumpets t- talent and you can play with your friends, not against them. Pick more or less on real time player strat- stats, excuse me, strategize with your partner to boost your odds and climb the leaderboard together. So grab a fi- friend and join the daily fantasy sports movement. If you're based in California, Florida, Illinois, or Texas. Download Better Together now from the App Store and sign up using promo code Locked On for a free five dollar entry into NCAA basketball contest. Remember the code Locked On because winning alone is fun, but it's better together. This episode of Locked On Bus is also brought to you by our sponsors over at Fire TV. Fire TV is a destination for your sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences 
with smart TVs as well as the Fire Stick TV that you could plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, which is going on right now, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV re recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Like I say all the time, we're brought to you by the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. I want to thank you guys for free and available wherever you get your podcasts. I want to thank you guys for tuning in and making me your first listen of the day. We're talking about the quarterbacks. Colorado obviously has a quarterback salute or issue, excuse me, not a solution. They need a quarterback solution. Mm -hmm. And you're probably like, they have Shador. They have Shador for one more year, and then Shador is off to the NFL where he's going to be probably a top 10 pick, at worst a top 10 pick. Um, I assume he will be going somewhere in the top five. But who's going to take over the program after him? There's Ryan Staub, who played during against Washington State and started against Utah, did quite well against Utah. There's Walter Taylor, six foot five, lefty, athletic, freak. He can throw the ball. He could run. There is the Wade twin, um, Destin Wade, and he is, let me tell you, he is someone who realistically has the athleticism and has the tangible tools to be a good quarterback, just needs more experience, needs more development. But where do they go? They don't have any quarterbacks committed, and they don't really have they, – or they haven't really keyed in on a quarterback recruit. They've been in the mix for a couple of guys, uh, but they haven't really keyed in on someone until recently, it seems. Starting with Bo Jackson. Not that Bo Jackson. B-E-A-U Jackson. <laughs> He's six foot four, 210 pounds, out of Michigan. Uh, he has been to Boulder twice, and he is ready to visit another time early next month. Uh, he, in an interview with Bus Stampede, he said, I really like the culture that Coach Prime is building over there. He has a great offensive and defensive coordinator. And the reason why is they set up college players greatly for the NFL by giving them tips and tricks to improve their game. He's also close friends with the recruit who also visited Colorado, Alex Graham, recently. Um, and he kind of talked about that relationship. And then also, he's also said that Michigan State is in the mix for him. And it's just one of those things where he's still early in the process. He only has five offers right now. Um, and he's kind of his recruitment's taking off, if you will. Colorado's his only power five offer. Um, he's currently unranked by 24 seven sports. His other offers include Ferris state, Bowling green, central Michigan, Eastern Michigan. And he's from the same uh, place that produced Brandon Davis Swain, which is a uh, current Colorado player uh, in this past recruiting class. Then, Obviously, the big swing for Colorado this offseason is going to be Julian Lewis, the five-star quarterback out of Carrollton, Georgia. He is kind of like the prototypical quarterback that everyone wants this year or in college football, in football in general. He can move. He can throw. He can do it all. Um, he is the highest, one of the highest-ranked players in the country and is really – has an interesting recruiting process, I guess you could say. Ranks as the number nine player in the 24-7 sports composite, two, number two quarterback, number three player in the state of Georgia, has nearly 40 offers. He's committed to USC, but there is this like sense that Georgia, if they want him, they will get him. That's what 24-7 sports Tom Loy said, I believe it was him, where if Georgia wants this kid, they will get this kid. And so it's kind of the, one of those things where like Colorado really has to put in a ton of effort. They have to put in a ton of resources to land him. And I think, I don't want to say it's not possible, but I think they have an uphill battle to climb. Now, we all know that Coach Prime is good for a five-star every year. But he's never landed one at quarterback. He's landed Travis and Cormani at corner, and slash receiver for Travis as well. And then he landed Jordan C in this past year at offense line. Landing a quarterback would be huge, and I think that would take another season of work. I think they would need Shador to pop off again, and they would really need Pat Shermer's system to shine and look very quarterback friendly because obviously no quarterback wants to play in a system where they don't feel like they have a lot of um, 
leeway or room to succeed. When he was talking to Steve Wiltfong at 24 Cent Sports, he said Colorado has a lot of energy. Coach Prime is a super positive. He is super positive and motivating. Talking about Pat Shermer and Shador Sanders, they want me to make the best decision for me, but made it clear that I, I have an opportunity to play early. And he says, watching practice, they have some guys that could fly. They have weapons on offense and look good on both sides in the trenches. Um, he said his dad is working on getting all of his official visits finalized uh, this week. And obviously, if you're not familiar with his game, he threw for 3,094 yards and 48 touchdowns and completed 66% of his passes and took them to the state title game as a freshman in Georgia's largest class. Uh, while completing 65% of his passes for over 4,000 yards and 48 touchdowns um, as a freshman. So this guy does a little bit of everything. He's kind of like the premier quarterback in the country. And he's just someone that it's one of those things like this past season for 2023, 3,094 yards, 48 touchdowns, two picks. And then he also had 43 rushing yards. So he's not like the biggest dual threat guy, but he can move if needed. And I think his, his game will compliment Colorado a lot. Colorado wants to get the ball out. They want to get the ball to their playmakers in open space. And that's exactly what this, de this guy does. They want to get the ball safely and smartly to their playmakers. And that's exactly what he does. Now, in terms of his recruitment, I think they have to take a pretty big swing. A lot of things need to go their way. They need USC to kind of, I think USC's kind of lost him in the sense that his recruitment seems wide open and they would really need to outdo Georgia, which is a big task considering he's in Georgia right now um, from Georgia going to high school in Georgia. So a lot of things to look out for. I think Colorado's quarterback situation in the future is a very big question mark for me. I would say that I don't think their future quarterback is on the roster right now, which means they're either going to land a recruit and he's going to play right away, or they're going to go to the portal and try to bring in someone, which I think based on coach prime's track record is probably more likely assuming that he's still there after Shador leaves. There's a lot of kind of noise around him. Uh, leaving once Shador and Shiloh and Travis leave, which I think would be very disappointing for the program. I think this would be very disappointing for all the fans, but obviously coach prime has said that he likes it in Boulder and he likes coaching. And this isn't just a short investment, but I guess we'll wait and see. But I do think that they're going to have to put in some work when it lands to, when it comes to landing their quarterback of the future. But when we come back, we're going to be talking about Colorado hoops. They're losing some players and it's looking bleak this off season. But first, a word from our sponsors over at Nissan. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. The NC State Wolfpack are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. The team absolutely surprised us all with a powerful performance in the first two games in the tournament. Wins over Texas Tech and Oakland have set them up to play Marquette in the Sweet 16. They say win life, go rogue. And that's exactly what the Wolfpack have done here. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. This episode of Locked on Bus is also brought to you by our sponsors over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and pa what patience is what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Guaranteed Motor, or with eBay Motors, excuse me, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S customers welcome back to locked on bus appreciate you guys for tuning in every single day making me your first listen of the day make sure to like subscribe follow all that jazz we're talking about hoops because obviously colorado they made it to the ncaa tournament they made a little run this past season it was nice and now they are seeing a lot of exodus if you will uh, just based off what we all think is going to happen around the program Let's just discuss. So Colorado was about, and this is like the rotation, so bear with me. I'm pulling up their, their stats and all that jazz. Colorado was about seven players deep. They're projected to lose their entire, or most of their starting five. Um, I think Tristan De Silva, KJ Simpson are both going to the, the NBA. And then 
let's see. Jalen, or not, excuse me, Luke, Luke O'Brien is a senior, so he obviously has a decision to make. And then Javon Hadley and Eddie Lampkin, both of which started 36 and 37 games this year, have both, in, both entered their name into the transfer portal, which means, and they're losing Cody Williams as well. He's obviously going to the NBA, or he's expected to. So you're losing four, at least four out of five starters, and then Cody Williams off the bench. And Eddie Lampkin, if you guys aren't familiar, Big Eddie, started his career at TCU, came to Colorado this past season, was flexing on everybody. He's big in the paint. He dominates in the paint. He's a Houston native, so maybe he'll look to return home, closer to home, or maybe he's just testing the NAL waters. I know a lot of, when it comes to transfers these days, a lot of guys are, or maybe, I don't know, it's, it's hard to tell. Some guys will say don't have intentions of transferring, but they do kind of want to test the waters and see if they could bait a program into giving them a bigger NIL deal. And I think maybe that's what's at stake here for both of these guys. I think they could easily have stayed and been key parts of the program next season, but obviously uh, they felt called to test the waters, which I think is an interesting decision to say the least. Uh, but either way, Colorado is expected to lose them. So if you're Colorado, what do you need in the portal? And I think that's a big question for a lot of teams. Um, assuming next season that he returns, they got Bang Bangot Dak, which is a freshman forward, 6'11, 180, very small. Um, and like he's a big guy, but very uh slender. He only averaged 1.7 points per game this past season. Um, not really didn't really stroke it well, 22% from three, 43% from the field. Um, but maybe in a bigger role in the offense, he could kind of be in that dunker spot and uh, just constantly get open from the buffs down low. But you need a guard. You need a leader on offense. You need someone who could run the offense. KJ Simpson is expected to leave for the NBA. Obviously, we don't know what his decision is till he announces it, but he had a career year. He averaged nearly 20 points per game. Um, he had about five assists per game, nearly six rebounds per game, was shooting uh, at a high clip, 43% for three and 47% from the field. So you need a guard that can kind of create for himself and create for an offense, run the offense. And then you're probably going to lose Tristan De Silva as well, six foot nine senior out of Germany. Uh, he had a career year as well, 16 points, five, a career high five rebounds. Um, he shot a career high 83% from the free throw line, career high from three, 39.5. Um, a career high or almost a career high in field goal percentage with 49.3. So you need a guard that can run the offense and score for himself. You need a forward, kind of like a small forward or a slasher, someone who could a second scoring option. You need as much offense as possible and you need a lot of size. Eddie Lampkin is ginormous. I think what he lacks in height, he makes for and makes up for in girth and heart. And I don't mean that to slight him. He's just a big dude. He's six foot 11. Obviously that's pretty big. 265 dude's a monster. He's pushing people around in the paint. He's a bully in the paint. But if you're losing him, Tristan Da Silva, and all you got is um, Dot, who I think has a lot of potential, or Doc, excuse me, you need some size. Doc is only he's six foot eleven, but he's 180 pounds. So they obviously need some some girth in the in the trenches, in the in the paint down low. And I think they're going to have a huge offseason ahead of them in trying to recruit talent and attract talent. Uh, they do have, which this is a good um, start, if you will. They do have a really good uh, recruiting class with three players signed or committed. I believe they're all signed. And yeah, so they have Andrew Crawford, who's out of Colorado, six foot six, a combo guard, four star. Uh, he's kind of the headliner of the class. And I think he's someone who could be a key contributor right away for them. Um, he's obviously ginormous. When you have a guard that big, it makes it easier to defend. And if he could, score at the next level it'd be huge for them they also have sebastian Rankick or Ran rancic a power forward from um san juan Cap Cap wow capistrano california which i think is down south uh from j sarah catholic he is six foot nine two ten and then they have felix kusaros which is from who's from canada six foot five 180 so they're bringing in some big guards they're bringing in a forward and i think they need more experience this is where the portal comes in because obviously it's great to have all these freshmen but you want to have someone with experience who has maybe some ncaa tournament experience or maybe just has experience playing a lot at the college level and is looking to make an ncaa run because colorado is going to be in the big 12 next year and you do not want to be in the big 12 
with an inexperienced roster that doesn't know what they're doing because things could get scary. So look out for all these Colorado moves. I'll keep you guys updated on that. Um, make sure to like, subscribe, follow. I appreciate you guys for tuning in to Lockdown Buffs every single day and making me your first listen of the day. I appreciate all the support that you guys give me. I will see you guys tomorrow and Friday. We have a special guest, so make sure to check in.